This is Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity. All right, we're working on the White March Part 2 stuff. We are in Whitestone Hollow doing uh, Zahua's special side quest for him. We have we have taken some kind of hallucinogenic, uh, some sort of psychedelic substances, and we are now in the spirit world, quote-unquote. That's why everything looks so weird. And we're gonna about to go help this spirit antelope, which I guess is being attacked All by right, spirit then. wolves or something. I don't know. We'll find out in a moment. We had just gone and retrieved... What was it? Some special water or something? For the... Oh, no, we got the repellent tree sap. So that the spirit antelope could put this on and not not be eaten by the predators. That's right. Is that a you wish they would let you set it so if it buffers, it just takes you up to the live time rather than creates a day. Yeah, that would be much better. I think. I feel like that would be better, or at least as an optional setting, like you say. Uh oh, winter wolves. Looks serious. Looks serious. Yeah. It was a mistake to leave the animal here unprotected. Oh, it's dead. We could not have stayed forever. It was bound to die. That is difficult to accept. In my heart, it feels as though there was more we could have done. Well, I mean, we could have split the party and left a couple people here to defend the antelope while the others went to get the sap, but... Unfortunately, the game engine doesn't allow for that. In the end, though, the wolves would have come. They can smell weakness from great distances. Ah, the delicious scent of weakness in the morning. We may have been bound for failure from the start. Well, let's console ourselves by killing the wolves then. Oh, Chieftain Ahulia is here. What does our quest update say? I was able to draw the sap the antelope requested. But now it doesn't give us a new update or anything. Chieftain Ahulia. Ahulia. An unusually tall man with brown leathery skin and a regal carriage bows to Zahua. Chief Aurelia, why are you here? I come on behalf of the Ketchmas to pay you tribute, great chieftain. Tendons bulge at the sides of Zahua's neck, and his fists are clenched. For the first time since you met him, he appears on the brink of losing control. He speaks through gritted teeth. You have come to see if I am ready to protect my people. The catch model chieftain smiles, bearing glistening teeth. Well, are you? Oh, and it's time for a fight, not just with the wolves, with a bunch of assholes. They got a priestess, a monk, a tribesman, the chieftain himself. All right, well, at least it dares in the front. At least it dares in the front. Hey. Did he just, like, fucking rage to Krynos? He did, didn't he? He turned into a werewolf. That cheeky bugger. Meanwhile, we've got a monk and a winter wolf here. I 
don't even know what to do with this guy. Oh, what's happening to Katie? There's a monk up on her. Why? I thought that monk was being engaged by... Where's Palagina? She must... Oh, the monk must have knocked her way the fuck back and down. That's why she's not up in there handling business. Sahua. If you don't mind, please. Damn, they are on her shit. They are on her shit. Alright, I stunned him. Hopefully she can take him out. Palagina, thanks for showing up. How about a lay on hands for my girl here? Silent Scream over there. There. Oh, we've already killed the priestess. Nice. Knock down this tribesman. Zahua. We can go do a skyward kick on the chieftain over there. Oh, did you see that? It knocked him way up in the air. That was awesome. Oh, well, this just got easy. Oh, we just won already. Yeah, I'm, I'm awaiting your bad jokes, Saito. I'm awaiting them. Sawa contemplates the body of his enemy. When the catch model chieftain saw me, he knew I was not prepared to resist him. If I had been more convincing, I have always believed they would not have attacked. So it was really just a matter of his confidence in himself. The answer was within him the whole time, as we've already heard. They'd have come for you sooner or later. Zawa sees this now. This was the life of the Takan. We lived knowing that one day, the wolves would come. And finally, the day came when we were wounded and could not escape them. Zawa shakes his head and smiles bitterly. I have been caught in a snare, worrying over things that could not be changed. These visions shame me with their truths. Ishipilo never warned me of this, but I should have seen it sooner. So the answer really was within you the whole time. I have become a slave to knowledge I will never learn. I have denied all my failures. Yet, I feel no different, no freer than I was. There is something I am missing, even now. What is it? Oh, what's going on here? Or are we leaving the spirit? <gasps> the lake this just may disappeared. Be our answer. Let us see what has been uncovered. The water just disappeared. The pond at the center of Whitestone Hollow drained. Revealing a small island in its center. We should see what lies in store for Zawa there. Well, yeah. Apparently we should. Um... Hmm. 
monk outfits, other goodies. I shall be quiet as a calm sea, which is not very quiet. Okay, let's go for it. Saito says, you need to flare, Zawa. Do you have some flashy clothes? Time to peacock, my friend. Oh, God. That's exactly what he needs. Alright, we're about to find out what is on this crazy island where the water just drained away that used to be a pond. Uh oh. You must come with me at once. Hey, there's Zahua. Zahua, you should not be. If you are caught, they will execute you. And they will not fail twice. Nawaltia. I do not care about my life, Nawaltia. I come to liberate the Takat. We will unite and revolt. He's here to liberate some Takan. And who will you unite? Our men are dead or broken. Their labors were too cruel. Hmm. Our women are mothers to catch my children now. The Takan live only in your mind. Wow. No more Takan, basically. So... You don't have a people anymore, Zawa, sorry. The good news is, I have a place for you at Kadnua where you can stand around in my keep doing nothing day after day after day after day while I use other people in my party and you are completely useless. So, you know, you've got that going for you. Zawa stands in silence, staring where the apparitions had been. What was that about? An argument Zawa had with someone once. His jaw is clenched. Nothing came of it. Did that really happen? Some years ago, Zawa considered that he might never learn Ishipilo's secret. But he had vowed to return to his people. And so he did. He journeyed to catch model, and while their warriors were off raiding, he spoke to the surviving Takan he found there. Saito says sometimes you'll even get to go out for tasks Katie can't be bothered with. Well, I almost always send Aloth, so only if Aloth is busy, then you can get a hand-me-down task. She was a Nalpazka warrior, eldest daughter of the shaman. Hmm. She was, would have been, the wife of the Takan chieftain, if the Takan had not fallen. So she would have been his wife, if he hadn't completely fucked up and gotten his people killed. I mean... You never told me. For once, Zawa seems unable to meet your gaze. Zawa has never spoken of it to anyone. His face is tense, his skin lacking its usual smoothness. He looks old. He waited too long in returning. If there was a time to liberate his people, it passed long ago, while he searched for the secret of the Anitle. You should have taken your revenge then. Revenge is never the path of the Nalpazka. It leads away from enlightenment towards suffering. Well, honestly, Sawa, how well has the path of the Nalpazka worked out for you? I'm just saying. Like, your path kind of led you right to a whole bunch of failure. <laughs> if he gets bored, he can help out around Kadnua. Sawa, how do you feel about cleaning? Because there's about 15 or so levels of basement that need some work. 
Listen, I need you to go down to the 15th level, take pieces off of that Audra dragon, and drag them back up 15 levels. You know, and yeah, it'll probably take about 100 trips, so get started on that, okay? I had thought I was continuing on the path my master had set out for me. But I see now that I was caught in a snare. He was on no path. He was trapped in his own mind. The gem, the antelope, the waterfall. Their lessons were not about Ishipilo's secrets. They were about my vow to return to the Takan. Yes. They were. He is quiet again. His eyes search the ground, then seem to fix on something. You look down, but see only a small worm burrowing into the earth near his feet. He stares in that direction for a time. Then, slowly, he looks up at you. The time of my people has ended. There is nothing more I can do for them. The words seem to surprise him. Hmm. The culture of the Takan and their now Pazka warriors still exists within you. You can still carry it forward. Their time on Aora was too brief. There is much the rest of the world might have learned from them. Much that I might yet share. Yeah, see, now you can just be a teacher. Because those that can do... And those that can't teach, and we've already clearly proven that you can't, because you failed to save your people. So it sounds like teaching is uh, right up your alley, Zawa. Zawa. Zawa looks around and smiles flatly. The dream fades around us. I believe it is time to return. We're leaving the spirit world, asshole. The brilliant colors around you seem to dull. Shifting objects settle into their true forms. Zawa appears the same as he always has. The same shredded skin. The same fluid posture. Only the look in his eyes has changed. Level up. Zawa's granted Anatle. Oh, he just learned the secret of Anatle? What? Alright, let's see. Taxes collected, nothing new to report. Fine, Aloth is still doing a major adventure. How could he possibly have leveled up if he was level capped? Zawa seems to have freed himself from the grips of a past he has denied for many years. Okay. Well. Level 16? He gets to go past the level cap? What the fuck? Wait, maybe the level cap is 16, not 15. Never mind. I'm just being dummy. I don't know what talent to take with him. I'm not going to use him anymore, so... One could say... One could arguably say it doesn't fucking matter which one I take for him. So I'll take Fast Runner. Now Zala he has is ready. On it lay. Where's on it lay? I don't see the ability on my. On it lay, plus 10% attack speed. Really? That's all it does for him? All this crying about how if he had on it lay, he could have possibly... 
When an Alpasca warrior has learned to free himself from the snares that root him to the material world, he is said to become the Anatle. Among his many gifts, the Anatle possesses a preternatural understanding of the suffering of all beings, and from that insight can divide an opponent's intentions and react to them before their opponent has even put them into effort. As a result, they know exactly where and when to strike, and can do so confidently at great speed. Uh, I'm not really sure that I see the connection between a, like, Dalai Lama-like Buddhist monk understanding of the suffering of all beings and hitting people faster. I don't know that I really am buying that connection, but, um, okay. Like, if you just do some Tibetan Tonglen practice where you, where you breathe in the suffering of all beings and then you breathe out peace and, and, uh, you know, into the world. Like, if you do that enough, you'll really be able to, like, punch faster. I don't know. That doesn't seem to be how that works. The Dalai Lama must be able to hit people fast as fuck, then. You can't even see his fist move. Let's get that guy in the ring. Sixteenth is the level cap. Okay, so he was... He, that's right, we're all sixteenth level. I was all shocked for a second. Then I remembered I was wrong about the level cap. And those that can't hide in our barrels of fish? <laughs> yeah. Hide out in barrels of fish. The answer is inside you, goddammit, Zawa. How many hallucinations do you need to tell you? Right? Now we just need to release Aloth from his denial of that one night with his friend Gary from Wizard College. And we'll be on the way to solving this group's past traumas. <laughs> oh, Aloth. That guy. Alright, Zawa. Here's the deal, buddy. You're gonna... You're gonna leave my party soon. Zawa is ready. What do you need of Zawa? You seem different. Oh, have you been into my Malkachua pouches? Zawa smiles. In some ways, I am much the same as I was. My people ended, and I could not help them. This will always color my thoughts. Yet in all my years of searching, there was something I had not allowed myself. What's that? When an Alpazka dies, the body is laid in a pit. All who knew him take turns dropping worms into the pit with the body. We do it to learn to embrace death, but also to speed him onto his next life. It is our way of saying farewell. Tradition says that if we do not do this, the deceased warrior's spirit remains trapped in the body. Though it is tempting to keep his spirit to ourselves, we fail him if we do not let him pass on. In the Malkachoa vision we shared, I saw that all of Takan was in that pit now, and I was the only one left who could cast the worms. They were waiting on Zawa. You say Zawa is different, and I believe I am in this one way. I am different because I have cast the worms. Ah, uh, that's all you needed to do the whole time was cast the worms. It was with your guidance that I came to do this, and I will continue to walk your path until I have returned the favor. Great, I've got so much fucking housework around Kadnua for you. Let's keep moving. Alright, cool. We're outies then. Of course. Wait. Here we go. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Thank you. All right, we're done in Whitestone Hollow. It's time to go back to Cadnizzle.
I'm just saying the way Gary tells it, it wasn't Alos' alternate personality who asked him to show them his scepter. <laughs> wow. Alos just needs to come to terms with his with his identity. This place, as beautiful as it can be with the absence of children. Okay, bye Zawa, it's been fun. Thanks for taking us to the spirit world. We did some fucking peyote with Zawa, it was good times. We had, we had a pretty wild party, it was spirit animals and shit. Now it's time for him to go. And he has a lot of health. Look how much health he has, 2042. He has more than a day or even. He has over three times as much health as Katie. It's pretty funny. Okay. So. Silas is okay. I'm going to admit in this one instance, I'm really hoping the worms that were the solution weren't inside you the whole time. Ew. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nasty worm solution. All right, Zawa, you're gone. Bye. Very well. Welcome back, devil. Follow me. Uh-huh. Sure. Back to our default formation. Let's rest while we're here. And we're good to go. So let's see what we're doing next. I've completed so many tasks and quests, jeez. Not doing that, not doing that. Not doing that or that or that or that or that or that or that. Or that or that. I guess it's actually finally time to go investigate the fort. Looks like we've done everything else. There's one more thing I wanted to check out though real quick. You're wondering if any awakened person has ever been in a relationship with one of their past selves? How could that be possible? I don't understand. Wouldn't their past self be dead? Now that would be one hell of an episode of Mori. Yeah. Okay. I want to check this out. This appeared on my map recently. It wasn't there before, and it's just the foundry. No, I think it's possible that that's just the Durgan's Forge thing, and it lets, lets, you go, lets you go straight there. But I want to see what happens if I go to that anyway. I just want to see. Also, I might have enough um, Durgan ingots or whatever to uh, upgrade something. Possible. What's this? Oh shit, probably shouldn't have clicked on that. Probably shouldn't have clicked on that. Alright, so we're just, we're back here in the Great Hall. I actually do want to go down to the forge though. So it looks like this just takes you straight from the world map to the lower level of this place. So you don't have to go through the outside map, then go through the Great Hall map, then go down to the thing. Because that's a lot of a pain in the ass just to get to that forge. What's happening here? 
Mm, I don't need camping supplies. So let's see if I can... I do have enough. I have four. I have seven and you only need four. So if I had one more, I could get two of these made. And so now that I have a Durgan iron ingot, this is already Durganized, right? And... This is already Durganized. And this, not enough materials. Oh, you have to have two of them. So I have to find one more ore so I can make one more ingot so I can enchant something. All right. What happens if you add it to armor? Well, it only takes one to add to armor. Crits to hits, armor speed penalty is reduced. What happens if you add it to a shield? Oh, you can't because his is a soulbound shield. Well... I feel like I need to add it to either her weapon or her weapon. But I, I'm short one one ore, I guess. Or I'm short one ingot to make another refined ingot. I need two refined ingots to upgrade a weapon. So if I find another Durgan ingot, I'll come back. Imagine if Aloth was in your party and all of a sudden you heard him whispering dirty to himself. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think it works that way. Lots of dwarves just chilling in here now. It says worker over their head, but I don't see a lot of work being done. It should say stand her the fuck around her. But that's a little bit cumbersome, so I guess we'll stick with Worker. As I would have told those guys back when I was a manager, you got time to lean, you got time to clean. Fucking leaning on the counter, getting paid for that shit. Always stuff to clean. I was a Domino's Pizza manager a long time ago. Pretty much the height of my career. <laughs> Back when I used to work for a living. Man, that was a long time ago. Alright, it's time to gather my party. You must gather your party before venturing forth. I want to hear him say it again. He won't say it again, will he? Alright, I guess we're going to the Iron Flail Fort, finally. This is like the main objective of the whole I expansion. And I've put it off for so long, and I'm finally going there. Finally going to the Iron Flail Fort. Oh, that's a cool looking loading screen. All the icicles on there. Looks like they've got our siege engine chilling in the back there. Interesting looking lodge. That was fairly fast too. Now right, let's see what we're doing here. 
been forever since I got these quests, so I barely remember. The villagers of Stalwart are concerned about a band of red sarens, known as the Iron Flail, which has come to the mountain with the intention of claiming the battery for themselves. A group of delegates was dispatched to negotiate, but they have not returned. Reach the Red Saren Fort. The Iron Flail has erected a fort in the mountain pass to the northwest. Any answers as to the fate of the Stalwart delegates will lie there. Darien asked me to deal with their commander, Adarek Sendemir. The White Forge has been restored thanks to your efforts in the White March. Investigate the fort. A fort has been built to the east of Stalwart. It may house the army I seek. The fort was built by Red Sarens with an interest in capturing Durgan's battery. Stalwart sent a group of delegates from among their residents to try and parley with the Red Sarens. But the delegates never returned. So I got to find me some delegates. Steady does it. Silas says, I wouldn't call it Geralt-level lollygagging, but still a pretty admirable job on Katie's part in making the Red Sarens wait. Well, hold on. They're not specifically waiting for me, though. They, the Red Sarens have no idea I'm coming. It wasn't like they said, hey, come meet with us here. So it's not the same thing. Let's work our way down here. Because it's the least obvious way to go. It's a big, wide open, empty area. What do we have? We got some iron flail gunners, a war dog, and archers and shit. They don't appear to be hostile yet. X safe takes forever. Should not be called quick save. Be called takes ten seconds save. I hear somebody tromping around. Oh! Iron for the warlock. Now these guys are hostile, so hold up. I feel like I should go talk to the non-hostile ones before I just start killing, randomly killing the other guys. What is this? Is this a moat? Is this like a trench right here filled with spikes? Is that what I'm seeing? Give me some ringer berries. Always need some of those. I don't know what the fuck those are. Oh! Mercenary soldier and his dog. Okay, hold up, hold up. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. Are you holding them? Hold your horses. Hey. Another... Slow save. Discovered a pile of logs. I just earned experience for discovering a pile like of logs. Attention, don't you? <laughs> what? Got some logs here. I feel stronger. No, but they did make their attack plans contingent upon you arriving. A little known video game fact is that all antagonists make their schedules around the protagonist whimsy. That's true. That's true. I'm ready. All right, Adair, go forward and be our diplomat. All right then. Iron Flail Gunner, the soldiers watch you warily as you approach. Once you're within speaking distance, one of them gestures with his pistol. That's far enough. What are you doing here? You lost. I'm here to speak with the commander. The commander's not receiving any more visitors. He looks you over, frowning. Hey, what's up, Boom Schlang X Boom Schlang X? Good to see you. What's going on? You are also streaming pillars and you have one question. Alright, I have at least one answer for you. 
It may not be a good one, but you can have one. How to kill Adra Dragon. Oh, well, I basically cheated. So check this out. You talk to the Adra Dragon and you, whatever, you agree to help it or whatever. So that it goes non-hostile. And then, and then you sneak over and you kill the ads without triggering the dragon or whatever. And you kill, you kill the two groups of his, you know, you kill all those Adragons. Those things are the worst. Then you sneak down and you kill the fucking Zarips. And then you can just fight the dragon alone without all the ads. And it's pretty easy at that point. Of course, my characters were pretty high level when I did it too. I don't know what level your characters are. So if your characters are low level, I would just say wait till you level up some more. Did Stalwart send you? I came here of my own accord. Dragon literally one shots? Well, level 11? Well, you might level up a little bit more, you could. Use, like, Scrolls of Paralysis, too. Those are good. You should be able to make them. You'll want to pick a side, and soon. Anyhow, a Derek wants nothing more to do with messengers or diplomats. You're too late. But why are you here? A Derek has said there will be a great battle. We are here to hold the pass and defend Red Ceres. Defend Red Ceres? You're the ones that are invading, motherfucker. This is DLC, right? Yeah, this is the... This is part two of the expansion, yeah. He has seen this in a dream. Oh, Christ. More Red Sarens having dumbass visions and thinking they're the embodiments of gods and shit. <laughs> Haven't you people learned your lesson about would-be prophets? A dark doesn't claim to be wide when reborn. The soldier's tone is clipped, offended. You've asked more than enough questions. Go on, get out of here. I won't warn you again. They're spoiling for a fight. Fancy having a look elsewhere? I fancy killing these fuckers is what I if fancy. Secrets whisper here, I shall listen for them. So what's going on with this pile of logs? I'm ready. These logs seem recently cut, and from their size they once numbered amongst the older trees surrounding the pass. Just ahead of you, the gates to the fort remain shut fast. You spy archers moving along the tops of the watchtowers, scanning the surroundings, and the chill breeze carries the scent of burning pitch. Apparently there's nothing I can do with these logs for the moment. Ah. Well, what if I'm like... Eyes open. Hey, can I ha- what if I have a dare talk to this guy again? What happens then? I won't warn you again. Sure you won't, buddy. Sure you won't. All right. Intruders! Keep them from the gates! All right, so we've got an archer, a war dog, a gunner, another gunner, a soldier, a dog, plus whatever else they've got kicking off here. Good. All right, who is this asshole coming over for us? Let's see him up. That guy just got destroyed. This one's stunned. Antipathetic field? What? Do a little knockdown right here.
Destroyed. Okay, well that was easy enough. How long you been streaming for? You mean like right now, today, or do you mean like how long have I been streaming in terms of since I first started streaming ever? Sure. Today I've only been streaming for about two hours and forty-six minutes or so. Uh, how long have I been streaming total? I don't know. I started back. Uh, I don't even know. Not that long, really, because I took a long, a long time off from streaming and didn't stream at all for like months. So keeping quiet. Like altogether, I haven't really streamed for that long. Less than a year, I'd say. Yeah, definitely less than a year. What do we have? An Iron Flill Archer Coif. That's kind of cool looking. Red Saren Prayer Bracelet. A tin and copper bracelet that is pop popular in Red Saris. It has three small charms that hang from it within hand's reach. The charms bear a star on one side and the words hope, faith, and vigilance on the other. The priests of Aethys encourage Red Serens to pray to Aethys while holding the charms between their fingers. Alright, goes in the stash. Your sacred religious items, they go in my stash. Got us some tin hats here. Hello, Iron Flare soldier. Pull him. Pull him. Uh oh, here comes more. Hey. He does not want to come over here. Wreck! Grooving Mother gets it done. Alright, good times. It might have been about a year since I started streaming, but I took several months off from streaming in there, so... They've got some special looking helms and coifs and stuff. Red Saren Fennings. Red Saren Fennings are typically stamped with the Penitential Regency's heraldry, or else with images of the Vorlus plant associated with Red Saren's once thriving dye exports. The coin's value is identical to that of the silver Adirian Fenning used throughout the Empire and its colonial territories, though Red Saren coins are not nearly as widespread. I go stream some Hearthstone? Cool. Thanks, Boomschlang. Good times. Have, have fun streaming. Right. Good luck. And uh, I've never played Hearthstone, but it looks really fun. I want to try it sometime. I want to try it one of these days. Look at this asshole. Iron Flail Warlock. Following your lead. All right then. The hell did that guy go? Come back. Oh, we got an archer too. Oh no, he's confused.
He's still confused. I can't do anything with him. I'm ready. Uh, 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 I have them. He's no longer confused. Smoked. Nice. Enough. Warlock's Kodak. Warlock's Kodak. He's a wizard, apparently. Red Saren skates. A like small copper coin, identical in value to the Adirian variety of the same name, and the Deer Wooden Panned. I like how they have all the different kind of coins in the game. It all just translates to your base, your base copper amount, you know. But it still adds a lot of flavor to the world having so many different like currencies instead of. Everyone just using the same currency. Oh, we got another tin hat here. Ooh, see. Oh, we got us a snow bear. Oh, look at here. Looks like we got us a snow bear. Dare, if you wouldn't mind doing hey. the honors. Oh, whoa, what's that? What's that? What's that? Oh, I'm in Pugra. Okay. I'm ready. That was easy enough. Wait, spies? Really? You see a person rampaging through your camp and your first impression is that they are covert operatives? <laughs> yeah, we're not very good at being covert. Got some diamonds, some bronze Abaddon statuettes. Oh, Durgan Iron Ingots! Durgan Iron Ingots! Durgan Iron Ingots! Now we can upgrade our shit. All right, cool. And some cogwheels and a tattered note. Had to stash the delivery. This place is crawling with soldiers. Tell Owina I'll make it up to her. Oh, really? Eyes open. This is the back side of their fort. It's cool that I can creep around back here. A wealthy noble by the name of Lord Sidrock has arrived at the stronghold. He was nearly set upon by brigands on the road, but your patrols intervened. Oh, he adds a little prestige while he stays there. That's nice. Alright, so we creep along behind the stronghold here. Somehow I can see through this wall to the, see these guys. I don't know how that works exactly. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Found something. All right, we will see what's going on with this idle soldier in our next episode. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity.